Hello everyone and welcome to the electrical power systems lesson of the Lunar Module Operation Series. In this episode we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into how the electrical power system works and what kind of batteries we have available, uh, a little bit about the DC power and a little bit about the AC power and how you can tie the buses together. So let's just get started. Uh, the first thing that uh, I want to just uh, mention is that the lunar module consists of two stages as you probably know the first stage is the ascent stage and the other one is the descent stage the ascent stage is that gray thing where all the two astronauts are sitting and the descent stage is the golden thing with the legs on it it's important to know that these two stages will get separated uh, during the mission uh, when when the lunar module will ascend from the surface of the moon and back to the command module. So the importance here is that each of these stages has different batteries. Uh, first of all, the descent stage has five batteries, which is the lunar module pilot battery one, lunar module battery two, the commander battery three, and commander battery four, and then uh, a special battery called the lunar battery. The ascent stage has two batteries, which is battery five and battery six. Uh, the uh, ascent stage uh, can, uh, uh, the batteries on the ascent stage can be connected to the normal feed or to the commander's feed in case of uh, emergencies or abnormalities. The other thing to know is that there's a monitoring part uh, by the instrumentation unit used to monitor uh, the uh, voltage, the amps and so on on the electrical system and this is controlled by the power and temp monitor selector here. And then you can select what inverter you have active uh, using this one switch. So the spacecraft has two inverters, uh, inverter one and inverter number two. And either one of them uh, could be uh, powering the AC system. So we'll get into the details here pretty soon. But first, uh, let's go into the manual. So the uh, lunar module flight manual that comes with Reentry has a dedicated chapter on electrical power and this chapter goes through all the details that you need to know to really understand the electrical power system and if you want to get even deeper than what the video does you can read through this chapter but there's one diagram here that I want to start this episode with and that's the uh, uh, brief overview of the electrical power system. As you can see, there's uh, six batteries plus the lunar, module, uh, the lunar battery. Uh, battery number one, two, uh, three, four, and the lunar battery. They are located in the descent stage, as I mentioned, together with uh, something called an electrical control assembly. You have two of them in the descent stage. And then in the ascent stage, it's kind of separated here. Uh, you have battery number five, uh, battery number six. Uh, each of them are connected to uh, another ECA called ECA number three and ECA number four, and uh, can uh, uh, and is then powered to DC buses. So there's two DC buses inside of the lunar module. One of them is the LMPs DC bus, which stands for Lunar Module Pilots DC bus, and then you have the CDRs DC bus, which is the Commanders DC bus. Uh, all of the subsystems are connected to these DC buses through circuit breakers. In addition, I quickly mentioned that you have uh, some inverters that produce AC power. So from the LNP DC bus, you have inverter number two. And from the commander's bus, you have inverter number one. What this inverter is, uh, is doing is to convert DC power into AC power needed by some uh, electrical systems, such as, for example, illumination behind the panels, uh, fans, and, and so on. The subsystems are then connected to the DC bus through the circuit breakers, as well as through the AC bus through different circuit breakers. In addition, uh, the lunar module can get external power from either the uh, uh, tower 
or from the command module, which is then directly connected into the VC bus. There's also tools that allows you to uh, connect uh, these DC buses together. So for example, if something happens with say uh, uh, battery number one and battery number two and the LMP DC bus goes down, you can tie things together so it will get powered by the sources for the commander's bus instead and uh, vice versa. So let's uh, go back into the cockpit. Let's take a look at the, the, uh, the send power first. Uh, there's a couple of switches here used to connect or disconnect batteries. Uh, LMP bat number one and commander's bat number four is a little bit special. And then you have the LMP uh, battery number two and battery number three that is, is normal. You can see that there's uh, uh, something is happening here. So these two are connected to one ECA and uh, um, let's go back to the diagram. Uh, these two are connected to uh, uh, ECA number one, which is then connected to the LNP's DC bus, which is then inverter number two and powers the AC bus. So to turn on and off batteries uh, means that you actually just set the battery online or offline to the respective ECA and then the ECA is then powering the DC bus. As you can see I'm now con connected to inverter number two so inverter number two is currently active. Only one inverter can be active at a time. So for example I now disconnected uh, lunar module fire battery number one from the ECA only the LMP battery number two is now powering the ECA, thus the LMP bus. So right now, this one is completely offline. Battery number two is online, connected to the ECA, which is then connected to the uh, DC bus, which is then connected to the inverter bus, which powers AC bus number A. So as you see, as you in you maybe saw, is that if I disconnect the LMP bat, you can see that the uh, light behind uh, the panels are extinguished. The reason for this is that inverter, num inverter number two is not getting power because ECA number one, which connects and powers the uh, LMP bus, is disconnected. It doesn't have any power source, uh, which means that everything goes off. But if I connect either or both of the batteries to the ECA that powers the LMP bus, you can see that I'm getting the power back because inverter number two is, is online. I think that if I now close this and I set inverter number one to the active one, and if we then go over to, let's turn on the flashlight, to the circuit breaker, you can see that the inverter number one is actually disconnected from a circuit uh, breaker so if I connect this, you can see that I'm now getting power again. The uh, thing now is, if we go back to the diagram, we have battery number three, which is the only one that's connected. So battery number three is connected to ECA number two. ECA number two is connected to the commander's bus. So this one is now active. And I've selected inverter number one to be the one that should power the uh, AC systems. So this is why we're getting the power back. If I go back to number two and connect this, you can see that we now have power. So I'm going to leave a uh, lunar module uh, battery number two online and number three, and then I'm going to disconnect uh, number one. Uh, battery number one and number four is a little bit special. It, they have low voltage taps and high voltage tap taps. Normally, in normal operation, you will be using the high voltage tabs just like this. Uh, but when you first enter the Luna module, the low voltage tabs are connected. And you can see that the uh, talkback indicator is indicating LO, which means that the low voltage tabs of Luna module battery number one and the commander battery number four is powering the system. If you turn on the high voltage, they are now back to normal and in normal operation. The meaning for the low voltage taps is that during the initial part of the mission, 
only a, uh, a very few set of electrical components are connected and uh, consuming power from the batteries. And only battery number one and battery number four are powering these systems. These are systems that uh, you need to have on at all time during a mission. So uh, uh, they need it to be powered, but they don't need that much power. So it's enough to just use the low voltage taps of these batteries. Uh, another thing is that these batteries can be parallel. So for example, battery number five, if I turned it on on the ascent power, which I, I can go back to the diagram, right now I'm now connected battery number five, which is then powering the ECA number three, and battery number six, which is the ECA number four. As you can see, by default, ECA number four is connected to the commander's DC bus, and ECA number three is connected to the LMP's DC bus. So you can see that there's some lines here going uh, to, uh, in both ways. And this is the backup feed. You can connect the battery number five to commander's feed and battery number six to the LMP feed if you want to, in case of uh, emergencies or if one of these batteries die, you can still power both of the DC buses for that short period of time it takes to get from the surface of the moon to the uh, command module again. Let's see. Let's disconnect everything here. You can see that I'm still having power. This is because uh, the ascent system uh, is now powering the spacecraft at its entirety. So battery number five is ECA3. ECA3 is powering inverter 2, and this is why uh, AC power is lost if I turn off that battery. So I know that I went quite deep, deep on the batteries now, but it's very important to understand how they work, just because uh, if something goes wrong, you have a lot of different ways to recover from that. And you have a lot of redundancy that allows you to uh, connect different batteries to different systems, especially in a descent and ascent uh, configuration, meaning the, the lunar module as whole, uh, where you can use both the descent power or the ascent power, or at the same time, power all of these uh, for redundancy. This is usually done during a power descent, for example, when you have everything connected, just to be sure. Uh, if I now connect everything here, uh, we have one more thing that I want to mention. I'm going to turn off, or actually I'm going to leave it on. You have a dead phase. The dead phase is uh, currently the last uh, switch that the power from the descent stage goes through before it enters the ascent stage and all the controls that we're currently seeing in front of us. Uh, as you know, the descent stage is an external part of the spacecraft and will get removed. So a dead phase is then used to uh, cut off the entire power from the descent stage into the ascent stage. So if I, for example, set dead phase to off, you can see that now nothing is powering the spacecraft. And then I can connect it again, and it will return to normal and the configuration that we set up. When you perform staging, this will automatically happen uh, by setting this to dead phase. Um, the lunar stay battery or the lunar battery is used uh, mostly when you need extra power or during the lunar stay. Uh, it could uh, either be connected to the commander bus or the lunar module bus, bus but not both. Uh, it needs to be either connected to the commander's DC bus or the lunar uh, module pilot DC bus. You can see that the talkback indicator uh, indicates CDR when it's connected to commander or LMP when it's connected to LMP bus. Another thing to know is that by using cross ties, you can, for example, this is panel 16. The, cr uh, uh, the cross tie is used to connect um, the LMP side to the commander side. And on the other side, you also have circuit breakers, which is the cross tie that connects it the other way. This means that now we should be able to power 
to make everything here, you can still see that I'm now on uh, inverter number two. And inverter number two is powered by LMP battery number one, but these are now off, same with battery number five, which means that the battery number three and four, which is uh, in ECA number two, is now powering the LMP side and vice versa for the other side. I do think that if I now turn this off, and uh, go back up here. Oh yeah, let's turn these one off too. Sometimes this requires a little bit of debugging. You can see that now we're in the uh, configuration uh, stage that we want to. Uh, there's a flag indicating that there's uh, some issues with the DC bus. It's not getting power. But if I now connect uh, the cross tie to the other bus, you can see that uh, the uh, inverter is still powered, even though it's coming from battery number three, which is not directly connected with inverter number two. I know this is quite deep and uh, sometimes we'll need to go and debug uh, your electricity and the EPS system. Uh, uh, but uh, once you understand how this fits together, it's much more easier to get out of uh, electrical loss situation because those are uh, in general very catastrophic. Uh, let's connect all of this. I'll remain the Luna battery to be off. I'll also connect the same power. One thing that you can see is that the amps are indicating readouts uh, if I set this to different batteries. For example, right now I'll do this. You can see that there's, I don't have a lot of system to connect to that now, but you can see that there's no, a little bit of load on battery number one. Uh, battery number two is disconnected, so it's not getting any load. But you can see that all of these batteries are very healthy because the volts indicate 28 volts. And uh, all of these batteries should be at 28 volts. Uh, if it's less or if it's high, higher, you get an undervolt or an over, uh, volt, which overcurrent, which means that something is wrong and you should disconnect the battery or that the battery is uh, starting to get extinguished. Because remember, these are batteries, they don't last forever. So power consumption is very important to think about. Let's go back into the uh, monitoring here. The individual buses can be monitored. Uh, same with the commander uh, LMP as well as AC. And lastly, you have ED volts, which is battery A and battery B. If I go to off or ED, uh, I can use this one to check the batteries of the explosive devices system. If you remember from the overview lesson, we have an explosive devices system. It has two different uh, redundant and fully isolated uh, systems called uh, ED logic power B. And on this side, you have EZ, ED logic power A. These are used to power the stage sequence relay and uh, the triggering of all of these different uh, explosive uh, triggers uh, to perform things such as staging, deploying landing gear, mass, uh, uh, see what else, sorry, uh, helium pressurization, RCS, descent stage, and so on. These two have batteries, and these batteries are powerful. Uh, they're 37 volts, and you can set the power temp mount to off ED and then select which battery you want to monitor. Always make sure that this is 37 volt. If it's not, then there's uh, something wrong with the explosive devices and you need to turn off the fault uh, system that's faulting by using the, the circuit breakers I showed earlier. Anyways, I'll leave this to, to off. The last thing I want to mention uh, before moving into uh, the AC part is that as you can see i can set this to three and these uh, instruments are showing different values but if i go to the eps system and I turn off disp you can see that i now disconnect the power 
uh, for this instrumentation, which means that I'm not getting any readout. It's very important to use this uh, uh, to monitor. And this accounts for all the other systems. For example, ECS has one disk and, and same goes for a lot of the other ones used to power these different components that you see here. If there's something that's not getting power, such as, for example, the uh, pointer here, you see that one is on and the other one is off. Uh, the reason for this is that I'm not fully connected. And now you can see that this one is getting power as well. Is it important to monitor all these things? Because if thing, things are not getting power, uh, you might be reading values that are either old, zero-based, or uh, seeing something that is starting to break down. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is the circuit breakers. Uh, you have uh, circuit breakers for the lunar pilot side here. And then you have the circuit breakers for the co commander side here, or the commander's bus. Same goes for AC. Uh, most of the AC circuit breakers are on panel 11, uh, AC bus B, AC bus A, as well as the continuation of AC bus A down here. These are used to uh, 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 connect the AC components to the respective bus and also to tie these buses together. So for example, as you saw, uh, inverter number two could power both AC bus A and AC bus B and vice versa. This is because these four fuses were inserted, uh, which means that they are connected. Uh, so for example, AC bus B could be powering AC bus A through their inverters. You can also see that, for example, the integral lighting that I showed you is this circuit breaker. So if I uh, take this out, you can see that I lose all of this uh, in the cockpit and you need to use the flashlight to get it back in. I think that this is it for the circuit breakers. I'll just show you uh, the EPS circuit breakers on this side. You have inverter one, this is the, uh, the one that I used for the AC, uh, but you also have the voltage checks, uh, the uh, cross loom, this is a different bus, and then the ties, and then the battery feed circuit breakers are the ones that are actually used to connect the batteries uh, with the feed, which means the ECA and uh, so on. The ECA is used to control the uh, battery uh, power as well as monitoring and connection with the instrumentation unit and so on and will do a lot of automatic things if something goes wrong with the battery. So that's why you have the ECAs and that's why the ECAs are responsible for distributing power to the uh, various DC buses. It's kind of lengthy, but it's important to understand the uh, EPS. So I hope that this was valuable and uh, uh, that I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching and have a good day.